This week on the Stogie Geek Show, Jack Taranio <laughs> from Taranio Cigars returns. We also welcome Ben Lee and Jason Lois, who will help co-host the show tonight. In our Debonair Ideal segment, we will talk about cigar-smoking cities. Plus, we have our Stogies of the Week, and we'll weigh in on who CA will pick for the number one cigar. So stay tuned. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. to you by M. Bombay Cigars represent the most admired cigar culture of Cuba. They select the best of the best quality tobacco to use in the aging process. M. Bombay Cigars are then rolled in Costa Rica by some of the most experienced cigar rollers, giving it a unique smoking experience. The band portrays a detailed and artistic nature of our small industry. Try the M. Bombay Casera, the M. Bombay Mora, and the recently released M. Bombay Habano. M. Bombay Cigars, where the cigar is a way of life. And by Punch Cigars. For more information, check them out at www.punchcigars.com. Welcome, everybody, to the Stogie Geek Show. This is episode 213 for this Monday, December 12, 2016. Will Cooper, I'm in the studios here in North Carolina, a.k.a. Studio C. I have Mark, Riley, and Tyler at the Villager North America Studios in Rhode Island, as usual, manning the controls. We are actually tonight joined by... Not one, but two special guest co-hosts. We have uh, Ben Lee, who a lot of folks know from Stogie Review and prior uh, to that, uh, Nice Tight Ash. And Jason Loyce, who's the former national sales manager for Crossfire Cigars. Both have been on Stogie Geeks uh, once before. Ben, I know it's been a while for you, but welcome back. Really glad to have you. Thanks, I appreciate it. Glad to be back on. Long overdue, long overdue. You know, you know, Ben. You know, a lot of folks know Ben. He he really has been a a pioneer for a lot of what we do. Um, if you've seen Ben's work with the video reviews, very very hard thing to do. And and you know, of course, he's been doing um, the IPCPR coverage for several years with Stogie Review. And really, I'd say they're one of one of two two or three brands that I. You guys just capture the vibe of that show. Every year. I mean, it's the next best thing to be in there is what I tell people. Yeah, I think it's appreciate it. It's, it's a lot of work, definitely. Trying to get through that entire show. It seems like it gets bigger and bigger every year. You know, Brian, you and I try to go interview as many people as we can and get as much information as we can for, you know, all the, you know, readers, the viewers, the videos. and Yeah, it's a daunting task, but uh, we enjoy doing it. It's fun. Yeah, no, it's great. And we have uh, we have another uh, gentleman, Jason Loyce, who was on the show back in February. And uh, at the time, he was the national sales manager for Crossfire Cigars. And, you know, I had it was such a great segment that I wanted to get Jason back on to actually participate from time to time when we, when we do bring in uh, guest co-hosts. So, uh, Jason, really, thanks a lot. Welcome aboard, man. No, well, thank you uh, so much for for having me back on. Uh, it was a, a joy and a pleasure to to do it back in February, um, and you know because of our fantastic government, uh, uh, I'm no longer in the cigar industry. But uh, but this gives me at least uh, at least a little bit uh, of an entryway back back into the industry that uh, that I love and I'm very passionate about. So thanks again, Will. No, it's funny when when Jason announced you know he was departing. You know, again, thanks to our friends at the FTA, of course. Um, I said to him, hey, if you're interested, I'm going to need – we were actually starting to look to put together this guest host program. I said, I'm actually going to call you. I don't, I don't think you thought I was actually going to do it, but um, <laughs> you may be getting several more already. So really, well, welcome welcome tonight. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, it's going to be a great show. Um, you know, before we get into our interview, just to know, you know, we'll do our um, – we're going to do a segment on Cigar Cities. And it's interesting because we have Ben – and myself and Jason are from different cities, so I think and we've been to different cities. So I'm sure we can share some experiences with that. I'm really curious to see what these guys are going to talk about when we talk about Stogies. And um, 
of course, we have our interview. And uh, the interview is uh, welcome, welcome back. Jack is back. Jack Taranio, Taranio Cigars. Jack, welcome back to the Stogie Geek Show. Thank you, Will. It's uh, always an honor to be on the show. You know, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I've been a little disappointed, Jack, because we haven't gotten that Where's Waldo moment from you for a while, but I'm assuming that's because you've been pretty busy lately. You know, I, it, 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 it was that I was busy and why there was a Wells, Where's Waldo moment, because I happened to come across a few people in my travels. I just haven't come across anybody. Uh, but, they're, you know, I'm, I'm lining some stuff up for 2017. I need to get some more uh, shots into the intro. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, Jack's in the intro a couple of times, and it's like we've done Stogie Geeks interviews, and, you know, I know we did one with uh, Nick Sirius in Atlanta. Jack just happens to pop in. Uh, Jack just showed up at the studio in Rhode Island one week, you know. So, And it turned out it was really good because our guest bailed on us. Actually, uh, he left the, He's another guy who left the industry, actually, that night. And we, so it was really good we had Jack there, so it worked out. But uh, So, Jack, um, it's... It's six months about since you've come back to Taranio. Uh, what's 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 how's it been going? Give us a st- uh, state of uh, Taranio, I guess. Uh, it's been it's been incredible. I mean, they kept me uh, more to Florida. I traveled in Georgia, Alabama, Pennsylvania, and we were keeping kind of a, a chart of the growth of the brand and 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 getting back into stores and and. And all those good statistics they keep, and and the brand had in stores that I was touching, the brand was growing two to three hundred percent. So, you know, as you well know, um, the brand was w- was in trouble. So, getting to see that growth made everybody very happy, and 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 we're looking forward to 2017, and uh, and I'm going to spread out further, and and now it'll be uh, it'll be visiting accounts all over the country. Yeah, so I mean, the approach you guys took was very much a grassroots approach. So you you basically have gone out to the shops and spread the word about Taranio right now. Yeah, definitely. It was uh, it was b- very similar to what I was doing with Duran, um, except I you know I, we I had a giant sales team working on my behalf with General, but um, it it was basically the same thing: visiting cigar shops over and over and over again and. And, and putting a face and a family member back behind the brand. So uh, so I, the traveling in the last six months was, was unbelievable. I mean, I was traveling five straight weeks at a time, and at least three out of every four weeks I was on the road somewhere. So, uh, so it's, been, it's been a fun ride, and, and I can't tell you how excited I was to be back representing the brand that carries my name. So, so it, was, uh, it was very cool. Yeah, you know, it was interesting, Jack, it was when I went to the trade show this year, um, obviously I saw you at the trade show, and it, Taranio had a presence really for the first time in a couple of years. Um, they didn't get you a chair, I noticed, though. That was the one thing, like, like you were on your feet four days, I think. <laughs> I was, I was, and, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not the, uh, the lightest on my feet, so it was taxing. <laughs> it was it was really taxing. The afternoons were, the the the, the dogs were barking by about two o'clock every day. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, but how was I mean? So you know, how, at the trade show, what was the reception like from I'd say the retail community? Because you you saw it more at a national level, I'd say at the trade show. How did yeah. that go? You know, for the most part, it went well. I got, I got, I got, uh, I got some honest feedback from quite a few that uh, that, that had issues with Taranio, and and I always appreciate that. But for the most part, it was overwhelmingly uh, positive. Everybody was was really happy that I was back, and everything was uh, was 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 good to go. I mean, I it was it had only been like about a month and a half that I had I was back with a brand so everything happened so quickly and the next thing I know I'm standing there in front of that display which was really a really cool display general put together and uh and pitching these products so uh and 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 it didn't stop there from then I just hit the road and and it's been non-stop ever since right right and you've gone to market I'd say with and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Really, two main brands under Taranio. It was the, the the reincarnation of the Vault, as well as the Exodus. Correct. 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 And and uh, we're going to continue that a little bit. Um, 
in March, we're releasing two additional vaults. And then uh, we are going to do our first uh, repackaging of one of the uh, leg, uh, the predicate blends. The Casa Terraño Connecticut will be uh, the, the trade show release in 2017, repackaged in a really cool box. I wish I had it here to show to you, but I don't. Um, so, so that's exciting, and, and as you know, that, that, that court decision that came a little bit after August 8th that, 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 that said that new packaging does not uh, mean a new cigar, and uh, you can repackage predicate blends really helped Taranio because we got about 11 predicate blends that little by little hopefully we can repackage and, 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 uh, and, uh, and, and bring current uh, to, to the new design. So. Yeah, I, you know, I was actually talking to someone literally about that today, how that was real. I'm not, there's nothing good about the FDA, I could say, right? But, but that was, thank goodness that that, hap- that court decision happened is all I was thinking because it would have been a lot worse if you couldn't do stuff like that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That would have... Uh... That would have kind of, it would almost would have been two different brands on the shelf. You know, this new colorful vault and the new colorful Exodus, and then the old legacy brands that were predicate in their old boxes, which, you know, needed needed a needed a new look. So yeah, this definitely helped us. It so you know Exodus. There's been previous iterations of the Exodus. It, are, are they still going to be around, or is it now going to focus on this new Exodus? Uh, we're focused on this new Exodus. Uh, the Exodus 59 Gold is a predicate blend. Uh, unfortunately, the Exodus 59 50 Year, which is one of my favorites, is not. Uh, the Exodus Finite was limited. Um, the Exodus Silver... Uh, I don't believe, I think it was right around 2007, 2006, maybe, I'm not sure about the actual date, but I don't think they have plans to do anything with the silver. Um, I think the 59 Gold, which was one of the top five cigars uh, of the year in Cigar Aficionado in, in 2005, will 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 have a, a long life, and, you know, it's a great cigar, so... Along with hear, it was an outstanding cigar. I mean, that was such a good cigar. I hate to hear about the 50 years won't, the 50 year won't make it because that was another great one. But 59 Gold was probably one of my staples when I was first started smoking cigars. And it's got a soft spot in my heart for that one as well. So I'm glad to hear it'll be back. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, that's why I'm, as everyone else, I'm keeping a, a close tabs on the FDA because if, if anything were to change there, whether it be a predicate they change or, a total exemption of premium cigars, you know, we it might it might give the 50 year a little bit of life. So that, that's the one I'd like to save. I, I just want you to know though that there are Exodus finites out there and actually I've been buying up quite a bit of them. So um, I was at a Indian I, trading <laughs> post. I was at an Indian I was I was at an Indian trading post on the New Mexico Arizona border. And they had a box of them at this Indian trading post, and I bought it. That's crazy. Um, yeah, I meant to tell you that. I keep forgetting to tell you that. But, yeah, so I bought it. Um, and they were fine. They were great. <laughs> so, um, that's why I, I, buy, yeah. I buy them everywhere I go to. So Yeah, it's, it's right off of I-40, and it's it's really cool. It's actually a, 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 it's in the middle of the desert. There's literally this hum, this this general store with a full walk-in humidor. Um, and I bought cigars there. I, I was going out to IPCPR actually, and, and I stopped there. So on the way back, so that's where I got them, and I had stuff to smoke home besides my stuff from the show. So very cool. Hey, yeah, Jack, there. about the 1916, the Cameroon one. Would that that's, be make return? Yes, that is predicate, and that will stay. Yeah, that, that that's one that's on slate to get repackaged as well. So. That's one of the best Cameroons you could you could buy for the money. It was an outstanding cigar. I still I still smoke quite a few. Yeah, I still have some too. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, you know, so Jack, as far as what's it been like? Cause, I mean, you here's how I look at, and I've kind of been in a similar boat as you. Uh, you were at a company, Tarano, which I, you know, small company. You went to a smaller company in Duran, and now you've gone to a big company. In general, which I've kind of gone that same route in my career. So, how's that been? 
You know, everything you hear about General, and, and it's it's been amazing for me. I mean, the, the guys, the people that work there, it's, it's pretty much the coolest bunch of guys I've worked with. And I know eventually today I'll have to mention a few of them because uh, I'll get I'll get some uh, some smack back if uh, I don't mention their names. But from the president on down, it has been an amazing ride. Um, if you remember, or if you don't remember, I, I signed on um, two weeks before their first national sales meeting that they had that they brought everybody together in the Dominican Republic for the first time in about six years. So I got to bond with everybody over a week in the DR, a week into my employment. And um, it, it was just a great, it was great for me because if not it, the first day I would have met him would have been the day before the trade show. But I got to play golf with them. I got to have dinners with them. We got to see all the new product and do everything together. And, 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 and we, we, we had some good bonding moments there and, uh, and really hit it off. And, uh, so it, it's just been an amazing ride for me. I'm used to the smaller company. I'm used to being more alone. Um, with Duran, it was, you know, it was just a few of us. Uh, at Taranio, really, we had four reps. And uh, and I got to travel a lot, but but nothing compared to now. So this is this has been eye-opening for me. And, and having the support of a company like General is in, insane. <coughs> Have they, you know, in terms of you've, you've come in, you've become the brand ambassador. How about in terms of some of the, the product development or, you know, anything like that you're getting involved with as well? Well, I, I got involved in the repackaging uh, of the Casa. So I, I, I got to give my input. When I came in, this stuff that, that is out now, the, the, the four new vaults, because there's two online and two brick and mortar, along with the Exodus, that was already in production. And, and uh, as a matter of fact, Vault had just hit when they brought me on. So so I didn't have any input into that. And uh, But I got to give my input on the repackaging of the uh, of the Casa. And I imagine as it goes, I'll, I'll be able to have more and more input. And, and, you know, I don't know how much input anybody will have on future blends. Um, but... Uh, but hopefully I'll be involved in every aspect of what is Tarano. Excellent. Will Cooper, uh, Stogie Geeks episode 213. Uh, Jack Tarano is our special guest. We also have Ben Lee and Jason Lois. Uh, ben, Jason, any questions you want to ask at this point? Yeah, I got a, I got a couple questions. Um, you know, Jack, uh, we, we've known each other for, for years. Um, you know, back before the, uh, the general, uh, acquisition of Taranio, uh, the Taranio booth was, was one of my favorite places to go in and, uh, rap with some fellows in the, in the industry that I, uh, cared a lot for, uh, your boy, Miguel, uh, Calvin Woods, uh, you know, Frank. Um, so we've, we've known each other for, for quite some time. Uh, and we spoke a little bit about the, the cigars that were predicate. Uh, one of my favorite cigars of, of Tarano actually is not predicate. Um, it was a couple years ago when you all did the the Gold Vault release, where it was a limited edition. Uh, you did uh, special events throughout the uh, throughout the nation. Uh, what uh, if? Are any plans with that gold vault? I know it's not predicates, but uh, are you thinking of something? If if things should change, that you may be sitting on a little bit of that and, and be able to uh, kind of have a re-release of that cigar. I got eight boxes in the other room, but <laughs> there's there's no more of that uh, that left. We made we made a hundred boxes. It was a hundred nine count gold brick boxes that that. Uh, that were for the vault tour and I think everyone either featured myself or Charlie or my cousin Carlos Yaka would would be at that event and the boxes would be signed and numbered whatever to 100 we made it to 67 so there was still uh there were still a few out there but uh I don't think it was a great cigar I I, I just don't think there are, there are any other plans so right. I'm hoping the ones yeah, the, that the room will be the collected sheen and the the sheen and the oil of of that wrapper leaf was just uh, was gorgeous, and the flavor profile just uh, it, it was very complex. Had a lot going on. Uh, just a cigar I really enjoyed. Yeah, it's funny because now I, I I have I have a lot of uh, 
guys that are very supportive of Taranio. Um, one of them in particular that lives just outside of Dallas, Don Smith. And Don is by far the number one Taranio supporter out there. And uh, I sent him a little care package and I included a couple of those cigars um, nice. as a thank you. And, uh, and uh, he, was, he was very happy. I think he's got every thing Taranio you can imagine so it's tough to it's tough to give him a present of anything so but uh, I knew he didn't have that so. right hey, hey Jack I'll be down in Miami like the end of uh January so I'm gonna invite myself over for a smoke now that I know you have eight boxes <laughs> you're all invited over Will <laughs> he doesn't think I'm actually gonna do it <laughs> no hey, hey, hey Will you you had one of those. <laughs> have you had anybody from General on recently Oh, uh, we had Justin. I don't think I know him. Justin Andrews? Justin Andrews. Oh, Justin yeah, Andrews. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've met him. We, we okay. forget about him, too. <laughs> so, Justin, yeah, I mean. Justin is, Justin is actually one of my favorite guys there. I bust his uh, chops a little bit. But Justin is uh, Justin has been my friend since day one. And he is he's pretty amazing, and he does amazing work there. So. So, yeah, I, just told him I, was, I just told him I was going to, you know, since he he told me he was going to give me a shout out when he was on the show a couple of weeks ago and two or three weeks ago and he, he failed to. I was going to I was going to not mention him, but I can't do that to him. He's a good guy. Yeah, I tell you, I know Justin from his Lou Rodriguez days, um, obviously North Carolina brand. Lou Rod. Uh, Lou Rod. Lou Rod. He Lou Rod. Yeah. And and he yeah I, so I got to know him there. I was really really glad when he landed with Foundry. And I'll tell you, Jack, that that time flies. Um, as and I know you and I have talked about the new Hoyo as well, the two AJ Fernandez blends. Um, fantastic cigars. Um, yeah, the new the new Hoyo, the new Hoyo, as you know, is one of my favorites. I'm, I'm, I haven't been shy about telling everybody that. And uh, time flies again, not not too far behind. Um, AJ did a wonderful job on both of those, and uh, and, and Justin's doing a, a wonderful job getting time flies out there. So I know he's putting together a good group of people, and uh, looking forward to 2017. But uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cigars and and Hoyo, uh, Hoyo's going to be on a lot of uh, a lot of lists, a lot of end of the year lists, I, I believe. Yep, it's uh, you know, you would actually. So Jack was actually the one who got me to. I to really smoke the Hoyo. I had smoked it at, at the trade show. And, you know, when you smoke it at the trade show, everything's a blur. Um, and then I was up in New York for Thanksgiving, and I actually took a couple of them with me and uh, smoked them actually at my hotel outside where I was able to smoke, and it was it was really good. I was very, very impressed with that. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't smoke a lot at the trade show then either. Well, mostly because I was filming while Brian was doing most of the talk in the interview part. But that's one that I knew I, I probably wanted to say when I got back. And I was really impressed with that that new Hoyo. It's, it's an outstanding cigar. Time flies is really good, too. I mean, there was actually a lot of stuff that General came out with this year that was very good. The new part, I guess, is actually an excellent smoke as well. Yeah. It's another one I liked. Yeah, I think uh, I think I think overall the consigliere, the uh, the there was a lot of great cigars came out of General. The new Exodus, I absolutely love, and I smoke it every day. It's not, I'm, you know, I, I that 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 new Exodus, even though I had nothing to do with it, really hits my palate the right way. I love it. So I had that one. I'm about to check that one out. I, I got the consigliere when I was there. We were talking with Rick, but I, I didn't, at the time, I had so much else I was smoking, I knew I wouldn't be able to really give it a, you yeah. know, a good tasting. So I waited until I got home, and I had actually had a chance to smoke that one yet. But uh, I've heard good things about that one as well. So, you know, I, I think a lot of I think at, the trade show, at the trade show, when you're smoking that many cigars, yeah. I think only a bad cigar stands out. All the others. Yeah. You, you know, you, you can you you will tell. Oh, this one doesn't hit my 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 palate right. But most of the others taste the same to me. It's yeah. it's, the, it's the ones I really don't like that stand out at a trade show where I'm smoking 15 cigars a day. You know. Yeah, that's a good point. That's true. Very yeah. true. It's it's the ones that's true. Um, but there weren't a lot of misses actually for me at the trade show this year either. Um, so that was, you know, it was, uh, the interesting thing about that consigliere is, um, they got that price point of the Robusto, like the seven, around the $7 mark. And it was like, I can't, that was, I mean, 
I'm trying to remember how the original Sopranos smoked with, when they had that Brazilian rapper. But it, so it's hard for me to remember that. I did have a couple of the Broadleaf ones from from the old CAO days, and I can tell you I like the Consigliere better than the, than the Broadleaf one, but it's a different blend too. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, Consigliere. The Consigliere is a. Uh, I, I really enjoyed that cigar. Um, I can't find it anywhere. It's been <laughs> it's been uh, it's been back ordered for a while now, so I'm hoping to to get some more next year. But it, it sold out quickly in stores, and it's been it's been out uh, as know, the it, it went the way of Amazon Basin. Amazon Basin hit stores and disappeared, and now every time I run, I buy I buy a couple of them. So Amazon you know, Basin, great cigar. Yeah. CAOs really, I think Rick and Ed in the last couple of years, you know, they've really hit the stride back with, with that brand again. Uh, they've been coming out with, I mean, obviously, the, you just mentioned Amazon Basin, Consigliere. They get a number three cigar of the year with the flathead. Okay. Um, you know, I, you know, I think that's they've done a really good job kind of putting CAO back on the map and haven't gotten the credit the last couple of years for that. Yeah, well, they did get the number three cigar, and Rick Rodriguez is probably the hardest working man in this industry, man. That that guy is is everywhere, and and uh, and I, and I I hope to be running that same game plan because uh, I mean his hard work put that cigar back on the map and in a good place. And uh, yeah, and and I, I Rick is uh, Rick is an amazing guy to to work with, and and I'm looking forward to working more and more with him in 2017. Oh. Excellent. Excellent. What, uh, Jack? I just said far- that Rick's one of the hardest working guys in the industry. I'm sorry. I said I'll I'll totally second the fact that yeah. you said that Ricky's one of the hardest oh working guys in the industry. He's he's amazing. Every time uh, I turned around, it, it felt like uh, we were running into each other. Uh, you know, going to see different shops and stuff. So I totally agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, that guy any given week is, is crisscrossing the country doing events. It's amazing to see. So, uh, hey, there is no event Ricky doesn't do. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and, you know, I, I, every year when I go to the general booth at the trade show, it, it's a very structured kind of guide through the booths. You know, General does a great job at it for us media guys. And I usually go to General later in the trade show, the third or fourth day. And I know these guys are given these talks like over and over again, Ricky doesn't lose any of that passion. I mean, it's like, I know he's probably repeated this thing a hundred times. He's probably been asked the same way, but, but you can see that passion with, with, with him uh, and some of the pride, especially, you know, especially like I said, the work he's come out with the last couple of years, it's just been some great cigars. I will tell you that that is one of the things that impressed me the most about the way the general booth ran the way, and, and you got to credit, um, the events coordinator of Victoria, Victoria, oh, yeah. Mac- Victoria handled the press incredibly. I mean, it was it was incredible to see how she would just. It, it was so structured. Everybody came by. Everybody had the right. It, it was it, it flowed really well through that booth. And I was coming from smaller booths. It was uh, it was pretty impressive to see, because at any given moment, there's a couple hundred people in that booth, and to, to negotiate between retailers and press and. And uh, it, it, it's not easy at times. And she was pretty amazing to watch. Yeah, she's definitely a superstar. She she makes our life a lot easier. Yeah. yeah. A yeah. lot easier. I mean, she is a major asset for general. I mean, yeah. as we compare, a lot, of, a lot of trouble we had this year was we would set up appointments. And then, you know, we don't like interrupting, you know, business. So we go in and it's like, oh, you know, hey, can we, you know, maybe meet in about an hour because we're not finished with this meeting. We're like, yeah, sure, no problem. Which is fine, but then it pushes us back on other, you know, appointments we got to do and stuff. But, you know, she says she wants to meet you on Tuesday at 1 o'clock. On Tuesday at 1 o'clock, she's there waiting on you, ready to go. Yeah. You know, yeah. She, she runs us through there. We get everything, all the information we need. She's outstanding. Really she had, is. It, she had it down. It was impressive. And I, I tell you what, she accommodated a, a change at the last minute for me. Um, 
I mean, normally I don't. I try to keep appointments. Uh, I did get a chance to interview Hans Christian at Davidoff this year, and they, they gave me one time. So I went to her, and I was gonna, you know, basically look. I'll keep the appointment. Is there any way you could swap it? And she she was great about swapping it. She understood. So I was, you know, I really appreciated that as well too, because um, I know how busy that booth is every single year. I mean, it is, it is a trade show within a trade show. That booth is what yeah. I tell people. It was eye-opening for me, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> the other booths I've been in, there was a lot of times where we were uh, we could have been playing dominoes. Not in this booth. <laughs> no, no, I'm sure. I'm sure, de- definitely, um, as far as that goes. Uh, yeah, Will Cooper, episode 213, Stogie Geeks. We have Jack Tarano as a special guest here. So, Jack, you know, we've been kind of touching on some of these other brands. Is is your folk like, when you do these events, are these events more of Tarano focused or are they general focused? And are you starting to kind of expand your horizons maybe to some of these other brands that you're part of the team? Well, it, 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 it depends. Um, some are just Tarano, but... A lot of them lately, we've put all the brands out. We've put the, a, a good amount of the new brands out there, and we offer the deals on all the new brands. I mean, what you're getting is Tarano swag and Tarano cigars. Uh, but, yeah, there, there is no event that I do that if somebody comes in and says, you know what, I'm just not a fan of Tarano, uh, um, I, we won't try to steer them toward another general product because they have so many, and, and I'll get them to try the new Hoyo or, or, or something else. Now, unfortunately for that guy that's not the Tarano fan, if he wants the deal, what he's getting is Tarano tin signs or or uh, or Tarano samplers or Tarano lighters and cutters, and he, he, it's going to say Tarano on the, on the deals, but, but the events have been more general product events. Got it. Which I enjoy a lot more. And, and, you know, right now we're focusing on three blends of Tarano. So it's nice to bring in an entire arsenal of cigars. And, uh, you know, that, that, that these are all hit in the medium, maybe a little bit of a medium plus profile, where you, you, you bring in the general portfolio down and you've got every flavor profile you can imagine. So, so you'll find something for somebody. Yeah, Jack, the, um, that was my actually next question in terms of, you know, given it's, it's a what's new market right now, like it's, or still, I should say still, still. and obviously that, that's, it's probably going to change very soon. Is that a challenge right now? Because we're, we're having only three blends. How, I mean, I guess we just answered the question in terms of you have other stuff that you can, you can, you can bring to the forefront, but is that something that in general for Tarano you're going to see as a challenge? Well, it's it's a challenge in some stores. In some stores, all they have is the new blends. Um, In a lot of stores we go to, they still have a lot of the legacy stuff left over. So they're happy that I'm helping them move the legacy stuff and and get a little movement in the Tarano uh, section of the humidor. But, uh, but But it is a challenge when we hit a store that really only has the two new vaults and the Exodus or... It's just the two new vaults, or just the Exodus. I've I've done an event where it's just the Exodus, so you really have to kind of improvise there and and, and include a lot of the other blends of, of general to, to to have a true event. But uh, but it seems to have all worked out, and 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 consumers have been really cool and really receptive, and everybody's been uh, everybody's been on board. So I couldn't be happier. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, interesting thing, so Jack, today you probably heard the news. General had a pretty nice honor. They got the uh, number 10 cigar of the year from Cigar Aficionado uh, mm-hmm. for the Punch Grand Puro, right? Now, I smoked that cigar earlier in the year, and I always used to smoke that cigar going back a long time ago. I mean, that was just a great medium to full, full-bodied Honduran cigar. And I thought when I smoked it early in the year, I'm like, this is a, a fantastic cigar. But but I thought it was almost a negative connotation just because it was a general cigar, you know. And I kind of thought it was unfair because I think anyone who said anything was complaining about it. I said, I don't know how many of those people actually went and picked up that cigar and smoked it because they'd be real surprised how well that was smoking is what I'm going to tell people. Is that kind of some of the things that maybe you find um, now – Going in as general, that you're kind of the big, your big corporate, and 
you know, you get this res- automatic resistance from a lot of cigar consumers just because of that? Uh, not really. I haven't gotten a lot of that, but, you know, I do see it in, in you know, yeah, Partagas, uh it's funny, people knock Partagas and they knock Macanudo, yet they're two of the best selling cigars in the industry. So so somebody's buying these cigars. And and again, like you saw at the trade show, some of this new stuff that General put out <laughs> sorry, my wife walked in. <laughs> some of the new stuff that uh that uh that you saw are outstanding blends and that that uh that that Partagas that got number ten is is uh, I have a box of it over there, and I, I smoke it all the time as well. I mean, uh, it, it. I have to tell you, I was never, I never smoked a lot of general product. You know, I smoked a little bit of CAO here and there, but I never really smoked a lot of their general product. So this is a whole new world for me, uh, getting to, to sample and try their the portfolio of general cigars. It's uh, I'm like a kid in a candy store. So. There's, there's some very good blends in, in that portfolio, like even – like. You know, I'll talk about, I know you guys distribute the Dunhill. That Dunhill Maduro was, was another great cigar. Yes. Um, very underrated. And that got something, that got honored in Cigar Journal today in the top 25. Um, I, I didn't see that, but, uh, well, yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah, um, I, like, I like a lot of general stuff, too. I mean, when I first started smoking cigars, the two, two brands that I smoked a lot of, honestly, were Punch and the Hoya de, uh, de Monterey Excaliburs. And to this day, I still smoke a lot of both of those. Because to me, it's almost, I mean, they to me, they, they taste great. I mean, they're not bad cigars in, in the least bit. But to me, it's almost like, like your comfort food. Or, you know, like I know when I, when I grab one, I, I know when I, I want a good cigar, but I really don't know what I want. If I know if I grab one of those two, I'm going to win, basically. <laughs> because they're really good cigars. You know, and the Grand Pearl was why was one of my favorites in the whole line. So I'm kind of glad to see that come out as the number ten. I mean, because it's an outstanding cigar, it it never really gets any recognition either. It's been forgotten about, yeah. But I tell you, like I said, I thought it smoked fan. I had it probably about March, and I thought it, and I had just picked one up. It was a very small shop I was in, right? They didn't have all the what's new, and I needed a cigar. And I said, yeah, I haven't smoked this. And he said, yeah, I just got these in. Um, so I, I guess it was a newer shipment and it was, I tell you what, I said, wow, I don't remember this thing smoking that good, you know, cause, but it's not because it wasn't good. I hadn't had it in so long and it was great to just revisit that. So Coop, what are you thinking? What's, 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 uh, what's your favorite for the number one this year? Uh, I'm going to give it away in the third segment. Um, but uh, okay, I guess I'll just, I'll give it away now. Um, as we said, we say, I think it's going to come down to three cigars, and I don't know which of the three it's going to be. Uh, but here, I'll give you the three. I'm going to say Drew Estate Norteño is one. I'm going to say the Illusione Ultra could be another. And the third could be uh, A.J. Fernandez Bella Arts. Okay, three good guesses. Yep. I got to tell you, I, I got to tell you, I'm thinking it's a Fuente year. I, I thought it was too obvious to go Fuente. Yeah, I'm thinking it's a Fuente year. Yep. Yep. I'm thinking it's either Fuente or or they're going to throw a Cuban up there. I, I I thought that, but I but typically they it would be my 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 answer is it was too obvious. Typically, what I've seen happen is um, they've either gone Cuban, they've gone Padron, my father as kind of a repeat thing. And then they, they elevate a brand that's kind of been knocking on the door for a few years. And, and that's why I said Illusione, Drew Estate, and um, A.J. Fernandez. Three good guesses. That would be huge for Illusione. I'll tell you. Uh, they, were, they were highly rated. And usually what I see is, and this is a, not an exact science, but usually it's not their highest rated cigar that gets number one. It's something that comes out of the pack in that blind tasting. So it's one of the higher rated ones, like the 92s. And those are the ones that kind of win this blind tasting. And so I was just trying to find something. I did think the, the Fuente Forbidden X, I think, will be up there. That, that, that I think was a very good cigar as well. So I'll put uh, Jason and Jack, uh, Jason and Ben on the line. Well, I guess we'll do this piece now. What are you guys thinking? Go ahead, Ben. I'll let you. Uh... <laughs> what There's I was... no wrong. 
Yep. What I was thinking was I was going to go Padron. I mean, the 50th is honestly what I was thinking, the 50th Maduro. And which that's the guy right there. Just because it seems to be the darling of the ball right now, you know? I mean, and I know they love Padron there at Cigar Aficionado, so I, I was kind of leaning towards that, you know, or, or the new 90th, probably one of those two. But, I mean, I just – I don't I don't know about a Cuban. I mean, I think they would get too much crap if they pick a Cuban as number one, you know, so – especially right now. So I don't know. But I, I could see them doing that, though, but – because there's, there's a lot of really good quality Cubans out right now. But I don't know. I just have a feeling that it may be a Padron. That's just a gut guess. I, I mean, because every year I'm surprised by what's number one. Every year I'm like, what? Really? So who knows? Honestly. Yeah. Before we, actually, before we go to Jason, so Ben, we have a, I have a friend, you know him too. His name's Stace Berkland. Yeah. You know Stace, right? Jack, I think, knows him too. Now, Stace, I yeah. will tell you has the best track record of picking the number one cigar of Cigar Aficionado. He's gotten it almost every year. He picked he picked the Le Bijou last year. He's picked the Oliva Milanio. He picked the Florida Las Antillas. He picked uh, the Mon- uh, the one of the Cuban, I think it was the the Bahique a few years ago. So yeah. he's thinking it's gonna be he's telling me he's leaning Cuban. Really? He, with the Romeo Julieta. That's what he's leaning. But he was more unsure this year. Like those other years like Le Bijou, he was Adamant it was getting number one last year. He didn't even have a question about it. But he said this year was tougher. Um, he hasn't had a 100% record, but he's been as close as anyone I've seen with that, doing that. Well, I mean, there must be something to it. I, I don't know. But the Bahiki was number one, though. That was kind of obvious. I mean, because that took the cigar world by storm. I mean, so that one was, you know, I can see that. I, I just don't know about going Cuban again. It's possible. Anything's possible. You know, but I don't know. There's so much stuff, you know, right now that's, you know, kind of in that that upper tier right now that it's kind of hard to choose, honestly. Yep. But it could be Cuban for sure. How about you, Jason? Well, I mean, you you both have mentioned some fantastic cigars. I'm definitely on board with that Padron. That's a fantastic cigar. Uh, if it were to get number one, I would totally be on board with that. But then Will made a, a, a great prediction in that A.J. Fernandez, that Bell of the Arch. That, that cigar is amazing. Uh, uh, my buddy Ryan Larkey, who's the uh, the rep in this area, came through and brought me some of those. And, man, I absolutely enjoyed and thoroughly uh, love that cigar. Um, but I, I think there's going to be a cigar that's going to hit that it's not on a lot of people's radar. I, and I think it may come out of the uh, the Caldwell camp. Now, of course, that's kind of back in my neck of the woods, being blended by you know William Ventura down in in the Dominican. But um, why not? You know, why not one of the one of the real small guys that's been doing some great things um, come out and uh, and and get number one? I don't I don't see a problem with that. Interesting. I could see that too. Uh, Jack, how about are you able? I don't know. Are you able to give any predictions, or do you want to give any predictions? Uh, you know, I'm hoping for some uh, some more good news. I, I'm hoping that 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 part of this was not the highest rated uh, General Cigar, but I, I am feeling kind of Fuente-ish on it. Uh, I think this is this is their year, and they they put out some. Uh, I don't I don't know if this. Uh, this 20th anniversary uh, opus is eligible. I don't think it is. I don't think it's this year. I think it would probably, unless, well, it's kind of weird because of the whole now August 8th thing. Like, I guess anything could technically be eligible. So it's hard I to think, tell with that. I think it had to have already been rated in the magazine, didn't it? No, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. That's you know, exactly. I don't know. It'll be interesting. I'd be surprised if it was... You know, I listen. I don't. I don't buy into the that you have to advertise to get a rating um, theory. Uh, I I don't really buy into that. But again, you know, Espinosa had a top. You know, I think Espinosa got 13 last year with Laranja, and at the time they weren't advertising. So I know there's been some some high rated 
cigars that weren't advertisers, I don't know if any of them have been number one. So that 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 would be interesting, and it, I think it would be a great move for cigar aficionado to to kill yeah. that tree. So it it would. I think you know in you know the interesting thing is I've actually in the last couple of years I kind of understand what cigar aficionado is doing with their cigar of the year versus what a lot of us do, which is we tend to focus on what's new, and I'm starting to kind of see the benefits. What I tell people is that's a very hard process to execute, you know, going and doing this blind tasting. And it's something right now I don't have the facilities to do, but it it is an entry. It's almost like a tournament is what I, I call it, where these cigars get in there and there's going to be a cigar that comes out of that tournament is what I say. Kind of like the field of 64, so to speak. That's a good yeah. analogy. For that. Yeah. 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 Um, so, other things, Jack. You know, obviously it was. I'm going to turn a little attention over here. You had a actually a big. It's actually been big for you in the sports world. Uh, Cubs, I see the, the, the Cubs, and now the, the what's going on? The Cubs and the Dolphins in the same year, Jack. You know, you know that I, I I have been uh I've been first the Cubbies. I'm flying the W back there, as you see, and uh and that was very exciting. I I was in uh, Pennsylvania when they uh when they won the uh, championship and uh. I actually watched uh, all of, up until the rain delay. I watched it at one of the cigar bars over there, and then uh, made it back to my hotel during the rain delay. And uh, was I almost I think I almost got thrown out of the hotel. I was so excited. Um, the Dolphins. I've been a pretty bad big critic of Ryan Tannehill over the last few years, and this year I've been uh, I've been on the Ryan Tannehill bandwagon. He's been doing a lot better, and he's showing a little bit of. Uh, improvement and lo and behold i jump on his uh bandwagon and uh and ryan gets hurt so uh i know so. It, was a, it was a real unfortunate considering the uh the season you guys have had right now and uh, you're you guys talking are... about football you're i know you're you brought up football because you want me to bring up the giants <laughs> well i'm not i'm not sold on the giants yet they they haven't played a they haven't beaten a really good team yet i'm i'm not a fan of this coach because he's doing the play calling and he has no experience as a head coach. And I think it's, I think the offense has been a little sporadic because of that, but I am happy. The defense is playing incredible and I'm very happy to have a team in playoff contention in December right now. Yeah. So, I, I have a history of sneaking into the playoffs and winning the Super Bowl. So they so. do, but that was when we, that's when we had Coughlin who was a legend. So, I mean, um, the the big joke in Charlotte is I'm a bigger Tom Coughlin fan than a uh, Giants fan. I I'm a very big Tom Coughlin fan as a person, um, as well as a coach. So th- there's, it's not entirely true, but I really really miss the man. So, uh, so is Tom, Tom Coughlin or Sly Stallone, which is the bigger? Uh, there's been a there's, there's been a there's a man crush on both of them. <laughs> You know, I will tell you I, this: I, I I was with a few cowboy fans today, and I I, I the Cowboys need to get back to uh the Tony Romo. I think, I think it's time. <laughs> I think it's time, it's time. I think Zach's gotten them as far as he can, and uh, I wouldn't ride Zach into the playoffs. Now, just, ben, uh, you're yeah. a Cowboys fan, right, Ben? I I thought you were a Saints fan. I am. I'm. I, I mean, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I get I get so much crap for that. I'm a Cowboys and a Saints fan. I mean, I grew up within an hour of New Orleans, right. and my entire family is you know we're all hardcore Saints fans here. But I was a, I'm a kid of the '70s, right? In the '70s, there was two teams: the Steelers and the Cowboys. Being a good Southern boy, of course, I'm a root for the Cowboys. What, so, there was an undefe- wasn't there an undefeated team in the '70s? Jesus. Uh, I don't remember. I wasn't <laughs> born yet. I don't know. I don't know about all that one, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they, uh, but yeah, that's so. I'm a, and plus now, having Dak Prescott on the team as the, you know, as their quarterback, he went to Mississippi State. And I'm a Mississippi State alum, and you know, and I've seen him, you know, his entire career at Mississippi State. You know, I've met him. He's a really good guy. I mean, he's outstanding. He got outstanding character. Plus, he's, you know, a damn fine quarterback. So of course, you know, I'm rooting for them to go all the way because the Saints are, pff, they're out. <laughs> Well, that will take that promotion, uh, that demotion well. Yeah. Good. Uh, 
No, Dex, Dex, it from here. I, you know, I kind of fall back because I'm a Tony Romo fan too. I mean, I mean, he's a damn good quarterback. He's a good guy too. He's a good guy. Listen, when, yeah. Tony, when Tony Romo's healthy and not injured, that guy's that guy's one of the elites. I, I mean, agree. Yeah. you you saw you saw a very frustrated in the last few games. Dak struggled against the Redskins. He struggled horribly last night. Um. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think you've got to give Romo a little playing time these last three games and see what he's uh, and, and get him ready just in case. Oh, you don't. You don't. You don't want to wait till the first game of the but, playoff to Dak struggles and you throw Romo in there at halftime. No, you can. You don't. You don't go eleven and one and you not. You know, not be good. He has one mediocre game, and let me tell you, that defense last night was unbelievable. The and that's Giants. What he, that's what he's awesome. going to face in the playoffs, so. though. Eh, he'll adjust. Any, eh, I'm not worried. I mean, he can't win out the entire year. I mean, but he'll be fine. Who did I lose? We may have lost Jason. I think he froze. <laughs> I think yep. he spilled beer on his uh, laptop over there. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying that I'm a Romo fan mainly because uh, I grew up with Romo. I'm also from Burlington, Wisconsin. Uh, grew up there, lived there until I was 14 years old, and and I went to the same school. We went to the same elementary. You know, grew up with him. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely a Romo fan, and and hope uh, him well, and and wish he could get back on the field. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be disappointed, honestly, if it was Dak or Tony. Because I, I, you can't go wrong. Honestly, I don't think you go wrong with either choice. You know, I mean, I, I would think there would be. There's a ton of NFL teams that would love to have the problem of, hmm, do I play Dak Prescott or Tony Romo? I mean, yeah. Jesus. I'm a fan of one of those. Yeah, I agree. Now, Jack Tannehill, is he out for the season? Did they announce that yet? Well, or is they, yesterday they said it looked like a torn uh, ACL. Today it's a sprained ACL, and uh, it's week to week with the exception of this week. So they're they're thinking that possibly week 17 against the uh, Patriots, or if they make it into the playoffs, he, he, he could be good to go for the playoffs. You know, they're, Matt Moore, the backup, hasn't played a meaningful game in five years. So... Yeah. It's going to be tough, and we play the Jets in New York this Saturday, and then the Bills in Buffalo the following Saturday. So those are two tough division games, um, and then we finish here January first against New England. So, so uh, we'll see if Matt Moore can pull a win or two out of his uh, out of his you know what there. I can say ass on this show, right? Out of his yeah. ass. And, uh, yeah, we're not regu- We're not regulated. <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, and hopefully, hopefully that'll happen. You know that you know who's got a tough team, who's looking tougher and tougher. The Redskins. They are looking very good. The Redskins are looking really good. Some teams are starting to to, to peak at the right time here, so it's going to be an interesting finish. I, I think the Super Bowl is wide open this year. My I fantasy team is to join the Redskins, being real good because I have Kirk Cousins as a quarterback. So he, he's gone <laughs> to the next level, Kirk Cousins, this year. I think so too. Yeah, he's coming on strong. And this That's Kelly guys, this Kelly guys turned into a quite a good running back, and, and uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jay Gruden seems like he's become a very good NFL coach. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's yeah. it's one of those years where in, in either league somebody gets hot at the right time, and and there could be a nice little uh, surprise team in the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's what so, the Giants did when they beat the Patriots. They got yeah. hot at the right time. They did. They uh, they did. They came. That you know that third Super Bowl when we lost to New England and it actually gave New England the undefeated season. Asterisk for Jack's respect of the Dolphins, but it was an asterisk. But um, what happened was it actually gave that team. They they it was like Rocky losing. I'm gonna do the Rocky now. It was like Rocky losing to Apollo Creed that close decision, and it enabled Rocky to come back. Same way I think it put the Giants on a roll, saying, "Hey, we could do this thing." And I think that's what was key for that that third Super Bowl in 2007 was actually losing that Patriots game. Yeah, and I think that's what's going to happen with the Cowboys game last night. You know, it, they seem to be fire. I mean, because really, you got a donk field goal, you got a drop touchdown pass, and two goofy fumbles that were just 
dumb mistakes, and the Cowboys win that. I, and that team, the way it's the way they're acting and the way they are, I think they'll learn from that and come out even stronger. That's what I hope. So we'll I think see so too. Happens. I think they're going to be tougher. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Jack, uh, kind of one more thing I want to cover. Uh, given you're in the Miami area, and I haven't had a guest on from Miami since this happened. Uh, obviously, Miami was an interesting place to be the night Castro died. Um, it it was, probably was. I was in Tallahassee. <laughs> oh, you weren't there. So you weren't there at all. I was in. I was in Tallahassee. I, I uh, luckily I did not check my text messages in the middle of the night um, because Miguel had texted me like at three thirty in the morning. Fidel is dead. Well, I I got up to go to the bathroom at about seven o'clock in the morning, and I look at my phone, and I'm Fidel is dead. And I I, I went to 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 one of the, the I think the CNN or something just to, to to see what was going on. And sure enough, I was I woke up Sessi, and you know we we celebrated like you know if Fidel's been irrelevant for so long, and that that. It, it was a minor celebration. It was it was a, a happy moment, and I know I would have had 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 the re, my relatives that have been greatly affected by this idiot still been alive. There would have been a lot of celebrating, but uh, but yeah, I, I, I saw it all on TV. I was I was away, or I would have been out there. I would have been out there banging on pots and pans probably. Yeah, it was interesting because uh, it happened Thanksgiving weekend, and we were up in New York. We we're in a hotel room, and. Um, I went to sleep early that night, and um, my phone starts, like, beeping, binging about 1 a.m., and I figured it was, I mentioned Stace Berkland again. Stace Berkland's, like, the king of uh, the party, lot, the party, the group text messages. I'm like, he's starting again. I'm like, I'm going to take the phone and rip it. And so I just finally look at the phone, and I start seeing all these messages asking me about Fidel. So I end up going about like two in the morning, grabbing a cigar, going downstairs, uh, breaking the laptop open and just kind of looking at this whole thing. I see Gabriel Alvarez posts a video, like a live video from down there. He posted yeah, and it was crazy. I, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I get all my overnight news from the Miguel news network. Apparently I, I, I can't tell you how many times I wake up to overnight news from Miguel. So yeah. I know well, that Miguel <laughs> he broke the news to myself, and he broke the news to Charlie Tarano. So oh, really? we thought it was kind of funny. Yeah, actually, Miguel's on the show next week. He's making his debut next week. Oh, geez. Yeah, so but, that's so, going to be. He's not good without me, so it's going to be. Uh, no. That's, that's going to be tough. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, yeah. So we're coming up on the bottom of uh, the half hour here. Um, Anything else happening with like Duran? Maybe the, over the next few weeks, or there's some events you're going to be hitting. Uh, you're taking some downtime for the holidays. What's going to be happening there? I'll let that slip up go because I have no idea what's going on with Duran. But oh, but, uh, I said, I said Duran. I said well, <laughs> Tarano, Tarano, Tarano. Good one. Uh, I'm sure Miguel does about four events a week, so I'm sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of Duran events. Uh, yeah. Actually, I'll be in Orlando uh, the rest of this week, and uh, and then it's pretty much I'll stay close to home through the end of the year. And I know we have a national sales meeting in February. Uh, I'm not exactly sure of the location yet, um, but uh, it, it should it should pan out to be a really busy 2017. And and I look forward to getting out there and traveling. And you know, when I'm up there, I'm going to drop into the uh, New Hampshire uh, uh, studio. So. Definitely, uh, just pop in. Uh, Where's uh, Paul? Paul's, Paul's been out for a while. What's going on? Um, he's got some stuff at home he's had had to deal with right now. So, um, but actually tonight, he, he, this week, this was a. I thought it was next week, but he uh, his kid was in some sort of a Christmas pageant tonight. So, uh, Paul, but Paul has been he's had some challenges, and we just wanted to give him some time to kind of deal with that right now. So, but he is. He my best. On anyway. hey, we uh, talked today. Yep, absolutely. Yep. A big fan. So. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Jack, uh, thank you very much as always for being uh, on the Stogie Geek Show. Uh, I know you and I will probably be talking in the near future, and uh, you absolutely. know I'll definitely see you when I'm down in Miami next month. Thank you, guys. Jason, Ben, Coop. Thank you. As always, an honor to be on your show, buddy. 
I appreciate it. Thanks for the support, as always. Thank you. Bye bye. We're gonna take we're gonna take a break, and we will be back in a couple of minutes with our second segment, uh, Cigar City. So stay tuned. <laughs> 